I'd like you to talk about why coffee is bad exactly. Um, and I, I love this because I've been wanting to talk about coffee and maybe I'll make another video about it sometime. Um, but it's not wholesomely bad. Um, it is uh, really good in some ways. It is a very potent, powerful provision of the earth. Like coffee is, is a great thing. But just like all of those things, you know, like any herbs, you know, elderberry, echinacea, golden seal, any of those, you know, coffee is actually medicinal in a way as well. Um, but like all of those, it can become very toxic as well if it is over ingested, as we all know, if we if we drink too much of it. Um, first of all, I love coffee. I have been um, a huge proponent, I'll say, of coffee since about 2013. And I would say that I've spent like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars on coffee since then. <laughs> coffee, and that's it, interesting, the energy of coffee is actually very similar to money and very close to money. And coffee has a big impact. It can help us to earn more money. It can help us to uh, create much more. And then it also uh, costs us quite a lot as well over time. Um, so to get into a little bit of channeling about coffee, it um, has also become... Um, corrupted okay so the medicinal components of coffee have been corrupted through mass manufacturing and through its deployment so it has um, some of its medicinal properties have been blocked so if you buy a certain kind of coffee maybe you get it imported from like an independent growth somewhere that's not like a mass manufacturer you're going to get a much more um nice kind of coffee that is that doesn't have some of the poor health effects um one problem about coffee is that people who are very ill or very sick energetically or who have chronic underlying health problems will be very attracted to it, okay? And it can um, really heal some of those things. That's why we're attracted to coffee. You know, we first wake up, we don't feel good. Um, we want coffee to help us get through. It's a very supportive, kind, and warm energy. Um, and when it's uh, developed well and used responsibly, it can kind of be a lifesaver as well. It's actually something that uh, might have prevented a lot of like really strong mental health problems because it really does elevate the energy and it really does um, help us to uh, feel more warmth and feel more love. It's kind of like a loving, it has a very loving, kind energy. You might notice that when you're drinking coffee with someone, it's automatically a kinder connection. Like if you have a bad relationship with a spouse, or a um, family member, it's like you're drinking coffee with them, you're able to be kind to each other, you're able to um, work together, you're able to feel the love again. This is another reason why this coffee can be a big problem though, it keeps people together longer than they should be, and it also keeps people from the doctor, it keeps people away from um, the identifying factors that they're very ill. It also keeps people in jobs longer than they should be because you're drinking coffee at the job that's wrong for you just to get through and you're falsely feeling like love and kindness from something that's not there. So this is the problem with coffee is it is, um, it is actually a, su a, a supplement to Stockholm Syndrome as well. So for example, people who hate their lives or really dislike what they're going through will sometimes drink coffee just to get through and feel good about it. And um, alcohol can actually be that way as well. Uh, coffee and alcohol actually have a similar vibration, even though one is a stimulant and one is a depressant. They do something similar. They give a feeling of warmth, connection, and love, regardless of the current stimulus. So um, in that way, again, it can be really wonderful. And again, like if you're in a quarantine, for example, this is a great time for coffee in quarantine, where we really don't necessarily have the option to make a change, and we need to be feeling love and warmth um, within this. Like, great, great time for coffee. Coffee is warranted right now. <clears throat> But during periods of time where we have more freedom and more autonomy, um, coffee might not be that great because uh, we might really need to make changes and coffee might really prevent us from actually making changes or coffee might kind of actually trick us a little bit into thinking that, you know, things are okay when they're not. Um, so it is actually, and, and we'll discover this maybe in a 50-ish years, but it's actually kind of like CBD. It really does actually have a mental and psychological effect, and it really, really changes people's psychology. The things that people see when they drink coffee, so for example, like if you're working at your desk, 
in your cubicle and you're drinking coffee, there's something psychologically that's going to make you feel connected to your cubicle and make you like it more. So this is crazy, but that's one reason why it's become so mainstream in American culture is because it really does support the workforce and it keeps people connected to their cubicles and it keeps people striving and it keeps people like reaching higher and, and wanting to make more money. Again, coffee is very connected to money. It's interesting also to know that coffee was one of the most valuable things in, in like the, um, so in like South America and um, uh, Middle America as well, uh, the native tribes would barter coffee. It was one of the most valuable things and it was like a kind of a form of currency for them as well. And um, that's interesting to think about contextually to what it means now. Um, coffee now supports the economy. Coffee is one of the reasons that the economy exists in its prosperity. And so for a way, coffee is karmically tied to the losses that we have right now during the uh, quarantines as well. Coffee is a player in people losing their fortunes and to people losing their jobs and into the um, gigantism that was the uh, stock market and the economy before it fell. You know, the bigger it is, the harder it falls. So coffee played a part in that. Coffee played a big part in that. Like we can't, um, we can't blame coffee itself. Coffee is inanimate. It's how humans are using it. Um, you know, the coffee itself isn't to blame. But as we choose to maybe drink coffee ourselves or introduce coffee into our lives, we have to really remember that um, what it's tied to, what we're karmically signing up for. Whenever we drink coffee, we are karmically signing up to. Um, like no matter what the surroundings of the current moment when we're drinking coffee we are signing up to distort our mental perception of how the people around us are treating us to some degree and it's not to say that you're drinking coffee and you can't you know tell that someone's treating you poorly like surely we've all had fights or arguments also while we're drinking coffee it's not like a love potion or something but it is actually a little bit of a love potion you know and that's not complete that's not a hundred percent but um i feel really strongly that coffee has kept relationships together it's kept families together it's kept workforces together it's kept companies together and um, when they needed to fall apart as well, it's kept them together. So it's dangerous in its own way in that sense this is that it, it is a fortifying, uh, cementing in, uh, substance. You know, it's like the cement between bricks. It's that substance that you put between bricks and it holds them together. And maybe that's best for better or for worse. We can't really say whether the bricks should be separate or held together. Like certainly, for example, um, to use coffee positively, if you're starting a new project or you're starting something that you need to be connected to for a long time that you need to see yourself finish, why not drink coffee every time that you start doing it? Because you'll really like it more than you might have otherwise. Um, you know, why, why not? Or, or again, in a quarantine like this, why not start drinking coffee because you'll be able to get through it better and you might have a better relationship with your family as well. So if you're having like family problems or relationship problems during quarantine, let's start drinking coffee together. Let's start, um, you know, maybe making time every day to drink coffee because we're going to feel like we like each other a little bit more and like we, um, you know, are more connected to each other. So that it's powerful. Coffee's really powerful in that way. And um, it's great to have love. You know, let's go on a coffee date. You know, that's why one of the reasons why the coffee date is one of the first things that we do when we first meet somebody that we have a romantic interest in, because I'm going to drink coffee with this person and maybe I'll like them more. Maybe. Um, and that does happen a lot. You might see that the, the dates that you went on that were coffee dates at first were the ones that maybe went somewhere. Um, you know, if you really have a crush on someone or you really want to start a relationship with someone, go to the coffee house. <laughs> it is a bit of a love potion, I will say that. Um, this is so interesting. I've never known this about coffee. This is why I love these viewer requests, because these are things that I never really think to do, like, a channeling on. But um, now I know so much more about it. And there is magic, for sure, within coffee. It's not all bad. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about the direct health implications, aside from the psychological um, effects of coffee. So what's it going to do? It is going to, as we all know, it's going to up your nervous system. It's going to make it run faster. It's going to require that more hormones are ejected. Um, so higher adrenaline, higher thyroid levels, um, that's all going to be increased by coffee. What does coffee also do? It takes our appetite away. So a coffee addiction or uh, drinking too much coffee is setting your body up for like hypothyroidism or adrenal fatigue if you're not also eating properly and sleeping properly. So if you're drinking coffee every day, you've got to have a great 
solid circadian rhythm. I eat lunch at this time every day. I eat dinner at this time every day, no matter what. I exercise at this time, no matter what. I uh, get the exact amount of calories that I need every day, no matter what, just so that your body actually has the fuel to um, be working on hyperdrive, you know. Um, but that's the thing is coffee actually um, satisfies us. So we think, okay, I drink coffee. You know, I don't want to eat lunch now. You know, I drink coffee. You know, uh, I don't really feel like sleeping now. I'm satisfied with how the present moment is. And um, but your body's running on hyperdrive, you're producing more hormones, your metabolism has upped its ante. <laughs> and if you're not putting food in that, that's setting yourself up for chronic illness, for adrenal fatigue, thyroid problems, um, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorders, all of that. Um, but it's really okay as long as you're eating enough and sleeping enough and exercising enough along with it, your body has enough energy to do that. But I will say it ages you faster too. The more coffee you drink, you're going to get more wrinkles, you're going to um, age quicker, you're, you will look older than you are. And that's not for everybody, you know, some people have like a strong Scorpio placement in their chart that keeps them looking young for a long time. There are some people that maybe produce a certain enzyme that counteracts this, so that doesn't apply to everybody, but some people will age a lot faster if they're consistently drinking coffee. Um, so really interesting, coffee. but. Um, also, I will say that some of the best things have been accomplished while drinking coffee, too. So maybe maybe Windows was built, you know, like the software system while drinking coffee. And if it weren't for the coffee, it would never have really come to fruition. Um, so coffee, again, it's responsible for some of the best things. And, you know, those are kind of neutrals. Like, they can be used for a lot of evil, but they can also, you know, help us to do incredible things. So coffee, I feel, is also a neutral. Um, I don't feel that it's good or bad. It is a neutral. And in certain situations, I will just repeat for the 9,000th time, it really, really helps us to get through. So struggling with mental health, coffee might really be good because, um, you know, we'll feel more happy and more connected to our current environment. Stuck at home in a quarantine, great time for coffee. We'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll be satisfied with it. Um, building an incredible project or starting something from the ground up that takes a lot of energy. Great to drink coffee, but make sure you're exercising, eating, and, and having a good circadian rhythm at the same time. When it's bad to drink coffee, okay? When we're feeling sick or unwell and we're not letting ourselves go to the doctor or get it checked out, but we're drinking coffee to get through and feeling okay being sick and unwell, okay? Um, when we're in a negative relationship and we need to make a change or we need to make a move or we see that some amount of stagnation has come into our lives when we um, have every freedom and are basically like not on a quarantine or something, bad time to drink coffee. Um, when's another bad time to drink coffee? Uh, when we're in a career, forced to be in a career that is like not um, kind, that could be good or bad. You know, maybe sometimes we have to do those things just to get through or just to you know, pay a bill for a short amount of time, but that's not meant to be very permanent, okay? Because um, there are a lot of really bad vibes there, and coffee will really make us feel that that's okay. But I love coffee. I love it. I'm drinking some right now, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm so, and I'm enjoying this tea chat like nothing else. I love it. I'm so satisfied with it. I'm drinking coffee right now. <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed this excerpt from the weekly tea chats that I do over on Patreon. I just loved this channeling on coffee so much, so I thought I would post it on YouTube as well. Um, if you've thought about joining my Patreon page for a while now, now is a great time because I'm putting out extra content during the social distancing time, so um, be sure to check it out. I post these tea chats, which are anywhere from like 40 minutes to an hour long every Saturday. I take viewer requests as well, so if you join and sign up, you can feel free to comment and request a topic to be spoken about. And you also get early ad-free access to all the monthly general readings and other videos that I tend to put out on YouTube. So it's a great way to help support my efforts here and to also get more healing content for your path. So yeah, be sure to uh, check it out. I will post the link in the middle of the screen right now where you can find this entire tea chat, tea chat number 10. And um, I talked about a lot of other fun things there. We talked about finishing Aries season, moving into Taurus season, how to work with the current volatility that some of us are facing. So yeah, click the center of your screen if you would like to sign up and get the entire tea chat. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.